On December 27, 1910, Gaumont sets up its equipment at the Academy of Sciences in Paris for an event that announces a new era in the history of sound cinema. On screen, Professor d'Arsonval lauds the qualities of the chronophone. But this time, image and sound have been recorded simultaneously, a first. To convince any remaining skeptics and definitively ensure a triumph, Gaumont shows the second film, which it would have been simply impossible to post-sync. <laughs> Gaumont never divulges his secret for recording sound at a distance, very much based on the work of Auguste Baron. However, he repeatedly claims as his own the invention of sound cinema, as did many others. The Edison Kinetophone is absolutely the first genuine talking picture ever produced. For until 1914, hundreds of companies take part in the sound cinema adventure, be it using sound cylinders or discs. There is the new Edison Kinetophone, but also Synchronophone in the United States. Filmophone, Replicaphone, Apologramophone, or Vivaphone in England. Biophone, Cinephone, or Projectophone in Germany. So many procedures which will soon disappear and be forgotten due to the war. And since our second story, that of sound on disc, seems to end there, let us look at the third technical approach to sound cinema, an idea that has been in development for a similar length of time. The combination of sound on disc and image on film is an unnatural marriage. Why not record the sound, depicted graphically, onto the same medium as the image, marrying both on the same film strip? 